Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a how-to look at how to get started with Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 3. Uh, you know, we talked about all the new features in previous podcasts and all the wonderful things you can do with Lightroom, and that's great if you're an existing Lightroom user moving up to the new version. But what if you're just getting started? What if this is your first time using Lightroom and you just want to know how to get started? Well, that's the whole point of this video today is just how to get you going with Lightroom. Of course, there are tons of resources out on, on Adobe TV and my own Creative Suite podcast on how to you know use Lightroom further once you get into it. But the purpose of today is just to get you going. Once you get going, then we can uh, talk about more tips and techniques and tricks going forward. So let's start with where you're going to start. I'm going to start with my camera. I've got a uh, Nikon D7000 DSLR here. And of course, it's got a memory card in it that I'm going to take out. I've already got some shots on it. I've also got a folder of images that we're going to bring in as well. So that way you get to see it both ways. Whether you want Lightroom to bring in the images and manage them, or whether you already brought the images in, they're in a folder on your hard drive, and you want Lightroom to manage them from wherever they are. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into Lightroom and we're going to treat it as if you were using this for the first time. So for example, I've already got Lightroom set up with a catalog. It's got my identity plate there, which is a feature uh, in, the, um, in the Lightroom menu. You can go to the identity plate setup and put your own custom logo in there. But let's go ahead and start where you would start. And let's talk about how to get Lightroom going. We're going to start with a new catalog. And the way I want you to look at catalogs as collections of your photos. Although Lightroom can handle hundreds of thousands of photos in one catalog, chances are you don't have that many photos that all relate to each other. In other words, I have catalogs for landscapes. I have catalogs for family. I have catalog for, for model shoots. I have different catalogs for different purposes. Some people do it by year. I tend to do it by category and then go in and clean up every now and then, getting rid of the pictures that I don't need. So we're just going to go ahead and create a new catalog. And now keep in mind, there's two parts here. There's the catalog that we're going to create, which is really just the database that Lightroom uses to manage all the information about the photos. And then there's the photos themselves. So they don't have to be together. They don't even have to be on the same drive. I keep my catalogs on my uh, Power or my MacBook Pro drive here, and my photos um, once once I bring them in and I've worked with them, they go off to a file server on my network. So they don't have to be in the same place. But your catalog cannot be accessed over a network, so it does need to be on your local drive. Or, and it could be any local drive, just it has to be a local drive. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the catalog in my pictures folder. You can put it wherever you want, but I just put it there since Lightroom likes to default to it being there. And I'm going to call this one Toys. This is my toy catalog. So when I create this catalog, uh, Lightroom will ask me about backing it up and testing the integrity of it, which it will do once a week. So um, in this case, it's actually trying to back up the one I'm closing, not the new one. And I'm just going to go ahead and say skip it this time. So uh, at this point, now it's cr opening that brand new toys catalog that it just created. I've got a couple of third party plugins that I'm just going to go ahead for the sake of argument and disable those. And no, I don't want to participate in the Adobe survey right now. And here we go. So that's as realistic as you got. I got the same warnings you might get. I got all kinds of things going on here. But the bottom line is, once I said new catalog, told it where to go, and it then op closed the catalog I had open and opened up this one. Because you can only have one catalog open at a time at this point. Okay, so now I'm in a catalog, and you notice it says Adobe. Why does it say Adobe? Or it might say your name. Well, again, that's because it's using a custom identity plate that by default, it's using your username. So my username, I'm logged in as a user called Adobe. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, turn that off, and you would I'm going to see what you would normally see, which is the Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 3. However, while we're here, we might as well go ahead and talk about it. If we do want to set up a custom identity plate, you can go ahead and make one, and it's particular to each catalog. So, um, 
can't type and think at the same time. Okay, so it's particular to each catalog. Each catalog has its own identity plate. So now this one would say Terry White Photography in this particular font. I can change the fonts, color, any, I can bring in a graphical um, identity plate with my actual logo. You can do it any way you want. You can also change the size. That's a little big for this display. Let's go ahead and drop it down a bit. There we go. And we'll say that now that's, I'm in the, no longer in Lightroom, I'm in the Terry White Photography application. But anyway, you know it's Lightroom. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, and that answers a question I normally get at this point, how'd you get your name up there? That's how I got my name up there. Lightroom menu, identity plate setup. Now let's get into the, the bulk of this, which is working with your photos. So I have a memory card. I'm just gonna go ahead and place that memory card in the built-in reader in my laptop. And Lightroom should detect the card and prompt me with this dialog box. And this dialog is basically how Lightroom will bring the images in and how and you get to tell it all the things you want. So let's start from left to right. So on the left-hand side, it tells me it's bringing it in from my memory card called Nikon D7000. Right now it's set to all the photos. It's going to eject the card after it's done. That's one of my feature requests way back in Lightroom 1. And now it's showing me in the middle all of my photos and more importantly at the top, it's asking me how do I want these photos to come over? So I can just, I can copy them, which means just copy them off the card in their format, put them on my drive as is. Now you notice that these particular files are .nef files. That is Nikon's proprietary RAW format. If you're shooting Canon, it'll be a CR2. If you're shooting some other format, it may be some other acronym. But whatever that file extension is, that is usually a proprietary one if it doesn't say JPEG because it's pr proprietary to a specific camera manufacturer. So you can bring those in. Lightroom, as you can see, is working with those particular photos. It will know how to use that RAW format but I prefer to copy and convert at the same time what it's copying to what's called DNG, which is digital negative. That's my favorite way to bring in the camera's proprietary RAW format because it converts it into an industry standard format called digital negative that is not proprietary. It's an open standard. Anyone can write to the standard. If Adobe were to fall off the planet tomorrow, people can continue working with DNG. It's not proprietary. Whereas if Nikon, Canon, or whatever your, can your camera manufacturer were to disappear tomorrow, you might have problems later on having finding software that will open up those formats. So think of this as the PDF for RAW formats. It's the industry standard universal way to work with RAW files. And you don't lose any quality. It might actually make the files even a little bit smaller using some built-in compression. But it's the same exact quality as what you would have using the camera's manufacturer's RAW format. Okay, moving on. So I have a copy or copy as DNG. I also have a move which says move them off whatever you're bringing them on in from onto your drive or add them in place. I would never use the add command working off a memory card because once I take that memory card out of my computer, Lightroom won't know where those, I mean, it won't be able to do anything with those photos until I put the card back in it. If I erase the card, the photos are gone. So the add is something we'll use later, but it's, you're usually either going to do a copy as DNG or copy when you're working with a memory card. Now, in the middle here are all the photos. You get a nice preview to see what they look like. New in Lightroom 3, you also get to hit the space, actually, you get to hit the preview button, not the space bar, there we go, and get to see the photo in like a loop view. You get to zoom in on it, you get to really to tell if this is the one you want to bring in. If you're bringing in multiple ones that are slightly different, you can't tell which one it is, you can tell which ones to bring in. Now, I want to not bring in some of the cars here. I like some of the cars where I've had the exposure better, and of course we want the ones with the hood open, but I don't want several of these to come in. It's just going to be a waste of space. I'm just going to delete them later anyway. So I'll just select. Now, I clicked on the first one that I don't want, I'm going to hold down my shift key to select the, all the other ones that I don't want. And now they're all highlighted. Once I uncheck one of the highlighted photos, it will uncheck them all. 
So now all of these five photos or these five photos will not come in, whereas the rest of the ones that are still checked will. So you can go in and individually uncheck them, or you can unselect them by a range, by just shift selecting, or if you want to do a discontiguous range, you can do your command key on the Mac or control key on Windows to select ones that are not next to each other. And the same thing, uncheck or check will tell it which ones to bring in. So let's say the card was full of a bunch of photos and I only wanted one. Then I would uncheck them all and only check the ones I wanted as opposed to unchecking the few that I don't want. So that's pretty much how this works. You also get to control the thumbnail. So if you have a lot or a little and you want to see them smaller or bigger, you can do that as well. And uh, again, we could spend a lot of time on this area, but we're going to move on. So let's now move over to the right-hand side. So it's going to copy from the card in this format, these photos over to the hard drive. In what folder? Where is it going to put them? So right now it's going to put them in the pictures folder. You can tell it to put them anywhere you want. And once it puts them in the pictures folder, I can even have it make a second copy. This is great to make a backup copy while it's importing them. So you'll have two in case something goes wrong. And I don't want them just loose in the pictures folder. I want them into a subfolder, not by date, but into one folder. So otherwise it would have made a folder for each day or date of the photos. So they're going to go in my pictures folder right here into a subfolder that I'm going to call table toys. That way I will know the difference between the toys catalog and the actual pictures are the table toys folder. Okay, next, and I, I know I skipped down because I just wanted to make sure you understood that you have a main folder pictures and a subfolder called table toys, and they're all going into the one folder. Now, the stuff that I skipped over, you can also have it rename the photos. So if you don't like the name that your camera gave it, you can rename them any way you want. You can use uh, all the different various presets, or you can make your own custom name and sequence. So I can say that these are my toy, my toys, and it will be my toys one, my toys two, my toys three, or I can leave the names as the ones that came from the camera and rename them later. It's up to you. Okay, next it's going to use no develop presets. I know that you're, or no develop settings. I know you're wondering, well, what is that? Don't worry, we're going to cover that later. And metadata template. I want it to bring them all in, but also while it's at it, go ahead and apply my copyright settings. So how do you make your own copyright settings? You just pop this up and say new. And then you can go in and put in all the information about you or the location or the shoot that you did. And it will put that in the metadata for all your images that are coming in. And you could save it as a preset or a template to be used from that point on. So, for example, if I go to my Terry White copyright, it will just let, it will just have all that information filled out every single time I use this preset. It will add that information to my photos for me. Okay, next and last, we're going to talk about keywords. Now, again, keywords is going to apply to all the photos that are coming in. So you might, you know, this is generic keywords that would apply to every photo. If you want to put in specific keywords for a specific photo, you do that after they're imported. But this is the global one for all of them. So if I wanted to do toys, um, table, brown, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and again, this is going to apply to each one. You separate each one with a comma and a space. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and hit import, and that will copy off the memory card each of those photos, and it's going to take a few seconds longer than just a standard copy because it's doing the conversion to DNG at the same time. So the, the images that are still on the, on the card, which it does not erase, are still going to be the original NEF files or NEF files from the Nikon D7000. And the ones that are coming in now are being converted as they come in to DNG files as well. And these are raw files, so they're bigger than JPEGs. They're like 14 meg files each one, so it's 
taking a few moments to do that conversion, but it's, it's doing them in batch. It's doing like two or three at a time as it's bringing them in, and it's doing a great job of that. Okay, so uh, Lightroom is a multi-threaded application. That means that you could be doing two things at once, so I don't have to wait for that one to come in before I start working with other the other ones that are in. I can start uh, deciding and choosing which photos I want based on the ones that have come in so far. I can start reviewing them. I don't have to wait for it to finish. Just by hitting my left and right arrow keys, I'm thumbing through or clicking through each of the photos. And again, I can click to zoom in, click to zoom out. I have my grid view to go back to the grid. So let's talk about that. You have this little toolbar down here at the bottom of the thumbnails. That is the letter T for tools on your uh, keyboard. So that'll bring it up or get rid of it. So if you don't have it showing, just hit the letter T on your keyboard and that will br should bring up your tools while you're in the library module. Now, the card is finished and it ejected it, so I've already taken it out and putting it back in the camera so I can take more photos later. But while we're here, let's talk about the five modules that you have in Lightroom. You have the library module, which is where you do all your image management. You have the develop module, which is where you do your image, your non-destructive image manipulation so for example or correction for example if you want to adjust the exposure or sharpen it or um, noise reduction or tints or all of the things that you can do in camera raw is really the, what the develop module is and again they're all non-destructive whether you're working with raw or jpegs the last three modules slideshow print and web which we won't spend any time on today are for delivery of your images so you can do slideshows on screen. You can also save them out as HD movies. You can, of course, print. There's lots of print templates and ways to print your photos right out of Lightroom. And you can also export the images as web galleries and upload them online for people to look at online. So those are the three ways of delivering your images. But we're going to spend some time getting you going here in the library module. Okay, so now on the left-hand side, You'll notice the catalog, which again, this is the toy catalog, and it's showing me I have 26 photos in that catalog right now. Those photos are broken down into the folders that they exist in on my hard drive. So all Lightroom is doing is pointing to that new folder. Here, we'll go look at it. I created a new folder in the pictures folder called Table Toys. There it is. There are all the DNGs. So there's no magic. There's no burying it somewhere in a, you know, in a dark cave inside of the program. It's just really creating a folder and dumping them in that folder, but then managing them in the database just like as if you if you had copied them on your on your drive yourself and then imported them into Lightroom. They're still in the folder that you copied them into. Okay, then the folders are where the actual photos are. Collections are Ways of organizing the photos into like albums or, you know, if you think of like a photo album or photo book where you have different pictures, you might have the same picture in multiple multiple collections. You might have two pictures in one collection, 10 pictures in another collection, one picture in another collection based on whatever criteria you want. So if I wanted a collection of just the bells, I can select the bells. I can, uh, and again, shift, click all the way through all three. I can add a new collection, create collection. Let's call that collection bells. And again, it will include the selected photos, which are the three, create. Now I have a bells collection of just those three photos. It didn't move anything. It didn't copy anything. It's just referencing those three photos in this one place. I still have all 26 photos in the original folder. So I can have as many collections in a catalog as I want for as many different ways of sorting or working with my images. And then down below, I have a whole video on working with the published services, but published services is a way to have Lightroom automatically not only publish out your photos, but upload them to the most popular photo sharing services and manage that whole criteria. So think of it as a collection on the internet. That's what the published services are. Okay, over on the right-hand side, you have your histogram, which is for any particular selected image. It will show you where the data is in that image from your shadows all the way over to your highlights. You have quick develop, which I never, ever, ever use. So that's why I keep it collapsed, because if I'm going to develop, I'm going to develop. If I'm not, I'm not. So I don't. there's not enough in quick develop for me to use. 
So I keep it collapsed because I go over to develop and use the full-blown develop whenever I want to. Here are the same keywords that we brought in, but now I can add more keywords for the individual photos, like for example, this one's a remote. So now that particular photo has remote in it, whereas the other photo, other photos do not. So I can add as many keywords to the photos as I want. And then down below is just more and more metadata, information about the photos, including the exit data where the photo, uh, where the camera put this information in for me. So you can continue working with a limited set of metadata, the default set, or you say, hey, I want it all. Give me all the metadata possible. Oops, I should say, give me all the IPTC data. There we go. And that will give me all of the metadata fields that I might want to fill in. And of course, I can still get to the exit data. I can still get to any particular one. The one I usually keep it on is EXIF and IPTC. So that gives me all the camera information plus my own information that I can key in. And in a nutshell, that's just a quick tour of the library module. Now let's actually do some real work. Let's talk about how I would use Lightroom to manage the process of the photos once I got them in. So for me, it's about using the library module to select and eliminate. Basically, I want to get down to my favorite or best shots. So in this case, I only have one shot of the window here. So I'm just going to I use keyboard shortcuts all the time, but I'm going to go into loop view, which is this button right here. But I just hit the letter E to take me into that. Now, I also at this point for selection don't need these side panels. I want more real estate for my image. So I can fill up tab key just like in, um, in Photoshop. It will hide the panels. The tab key in Lightroom will hide the side panels as well. I can hit the letter T to get rid of my tools. I can also collapse the film strip or collapse the top to really examine just my photo. And if you know your keyboard shortcuts, you can make your selections this way. Since, we, since you won't know what I'm typing, I'm going to go ahead and expose some of this uh, layout so you can start to see what I'm going to pick here. Now, in this case, there's not much of a choice. I either want this photo or I don't because there are no more like it. So in this case, it's not a matter of which one's better. It's the only one I have. So I either want it or I don't. In this case, I want it. I may want to make some adjustments to it, but I do want it. The next photo. Okay, so now we have this one, that one, that one, and that's it. So I have three of those. Now, I can look at them individually as I'm arrowing through them with my keyboard. But I can also look at multiple ones. So if I shift select all three of them in the film strip here, I can say show me all three at the same time. And then I can make my selections. Or I can say show me a compare mode, where on the left hand side, it's showing me the one I currently have picked. On the right hand side, it's showing me the one that I may want instead of the one on the left. So it's a matter of I can arrow through all the photos on the right hand side or the ones I have selected. Or I can uh, make a selection based on the photo that's here. So what I want to do is go back out because there's basically not enough to really use that mode. But I, I kind of already know I want this third one. So I want the third one. That means I don't want the other two. So I don't want that one. I don't want that one. I want this one. So if I don't want this one, how do I tell Lightroom that that's a reject? Well, there's a reject flag right here. I can also hit the letter X on my keyboard to set it as a reject. So that's a reject, and this is a pick. So this is the one of the ones I want, so I can hit the letter P. I can also go back to that first one and hit the letter P on that as a pick. So pick, reject, reject, pick. Now again, I have to decide between these. Well, that one's kind of out of focus, reject. That one I really like. Do I like it better than that one? Yeah, probably. So that's a reject. We'll keep the one in the middle. And basically, I'm, I would just go through and continue with this process. Now, in this case, I kind of took that photo sideways, but it didn't register as being sideways. So I can, or portrait, I can uh, go ahead and tilt it myself. Or I can keep it that way just by rotating the image. So I can keep that one portrait. I can keep that one landscape. And I can reject that one. So we'll keep that as a pick. That as a pick. And again, the keychain, out of focus. We'll keep that one as a pick. Out of focus. 
don't like it. Re so I'm really harsh. I like to reject because that keeps me down to just my favorite photos. Uh, we'll keep that one. Reject, reject. Eh, maybe reject that one. Pick that one. It's all subjective. There's no law. You pick the ones you like or don't like. You know, reject those. So I'm rejecting these. And basically now I'm down to just my favorites. So I'll hit the letter G to go back to the grid. And that will show me each one with its flag and whether it's a pick or a reject. Now I want to get rid of the rejects. They're reject, rejects. I don't need them. I already have my picks, my favorites of each photo. So I don't need the rest. So I have a couple of ways of doing that. I can say in Lightroom, I can manually do it. I hit the attributes, show me the rejected photos. It will now just narrow it down to just those. I can select all and delete, or I can do a command key that does all that for me. So if I do the command key on the Mac or control key on Windows and the delete key, if your keyboard has one, it will do it for you. It will say, hey, you've got 18 rejected master photos from Lightroom. Do you want me to remove them? And unfortunately, this is really not the best choice because removing them will take them out of Lightroom, but keep them on your drive. I want to get rid of them. I don't want them anymore. I'm never going to go back to them. You know, that's the part of a job of a photographer is making those hard calls and saying, I don't want those photos. So I'm going to say delete from disk, which will actually take them out of Lightroom and put them in my computer's trash or system trash. So now they're still there. I can get them back out if I need it to. But once I empty trash, they are gone. And as far as Lightroom is concerned, they are really gone. They're out of Lightroom. Okay, so now I'm left with my favorites. And again, from here, I can now start to refine them even further, put them in collections, and develop them, which we're going to develop one. And from there, it will be just a matter of delivery, whether it's slideshow, print, web, or export, which means I want to take them out of Lightroom, out of the raw format, and make them JPEGs or whatever format I need to distribute to a client. So let's, let's develop one photo. Let's select this one. And let's go over to the develop module with it. So I just switch over to develop with the selected photo and it brings it over for me. And what I want to do with this photo is I want to crop it. So I have a crop tool right here. I can just go ahead and hit the letter R or just click on crop. And I want to make sure to maintain the aspect ratio. So I click the little padlock over here on the right hand side. Now I can crop this photo down to just the area that I want. I can also move the crop around. That's more like it. I can grab it from any handle and continue to crop. Now you notice there's no real, you know, okay, I can click done, but there's no real, it's throwing away the data. There was no warning. There was no, hey, you're about to delete something because technically it's not really deleted. If I go back to the crop tool, that information is still there. It will always still be there while I'm in Lightroom. So when I click done and I go back to the library module, I see my updated cropped photo, but I can always go back to develop because it's non-destructive and bring that information back. So let's do one more. Let's go to develop here. And in this case, I just want to increase the exposure a bit. I also want to do a little sharpening. So I can manually do the sharpening in the detail panel, or I can use a preset. So I want to really crank up the sharpening here quite a bit. And again, you can zoom in, move around, and see that that's really doing a bad job. It's doing too much. Let's back off that just a bit. And you can also get into a little noise reduction here. And I just think I've got it just a tad bit too sharp for that image. So when in doubt, you can also use the Lightroom presets that are built in. And there is a nice sharpening for narrow edges, which is objects, and sharpen for wide edges, which is faces. So if I want to use the preset, that will do the preset sharpening for me. I can still adjust it to my heart's content. Now I also noticed that I'm losing a little detail in the highlights here. So I can go back up and I can use a little recovery to bring that information back in. So now that triangle is no longer white. 
I can also see that I'm losing some information of shadows. I'm okay with that particular one, but if I wasn't, I can adjust the fill light to kind of bring back some, yeah, see that starts to blow it out. But anyway, that's not detail that I care about in this particular image, so I'm good to go. So now, again, all of that is non-destructive. All of that it can be undone, redone, t turned off, so forth and so on. You get the idea. Okay, so those two photos have been adjusted. What do I do with them now? I can go to Slideshow, Print, and Web and do the obvious, or I can go to File and Export. And, again, there are Lightroom presets. I can export for email. I can export to DNG, which we already have. I can burn full-size JPEGs to a, to a disk. Or I can make my own preset. So I can say, export them to the desktop. Put them in a subfolder called for client. And what else? I can rename them if I wanted to. I can make them whatever format I want. So JPEG's good. I can make whatever quality I want. If they're for the web, I can use sRGB or Adobe RGB for print. I can resize them. So I don't want them to be full size. I want them to be only maybe 1200 by 1200 max. And... 72 pixels per inch. So I can do all of this, and now you'll notice that up until now, Lightroom hasn't really done any processing. Everything was instant, fast, quick, didn't take any time to do anything because it was all metadata. At this point, it becomes real because now I'm about to export everything I've done to those two photos out to JPEGs, and that's when you will see a progress bar because it's actually doing some processing. I'll still have the metadata inside the photos, but not, or you know, I still have the ability to go in and do the non-destructive stuff back in the Lightroom develop module. But those two JPEGs now have been sent out to the desktop. If I go to my desktop here in a folder called for client, and they are JPEGs now. They're no longer DNGs and they're whatever size they need to be for whatever I told it to do. At this point, I can now if I wanted to lock this metadata in that I've done, these keywords, these adjustments, these rotations, it, Lightroom by default will keep the information going in the database. But if you need to get that metadata out to the image that's sitting on your hard drive, that is Command S on the Mac or Control S on Windows. So think of it as save my changes. You don't have to do this ever, but if you want Lightroom to write your changes to the files so that if you're, so you can look at them in Bridge or some other program and those changes will be there, that's what the command S is for. It only takes a second, but now that information has actually been written to the files or if, the, or if it's a proprietary format, it'll make a sidecar file. So I hope you got something out of that. Again, we spent quite a bit of time just getting you started with Lightroom, but that is how Lightroom works. I'm going to show you one more thing because I promised and that is, we're going to do another import. So let's go back to the library module and bring up the panels. And we have our table toys in here. Now again, this is my toys catalog. So I probably would not bring in my pictures from Australia. So now we want a new catalog. We want a new catalog called Travel. So it's going to close the toys catalog, open up the travel catalog. It's going to be empty because I just created it. And again, it's back to the default um, identity plate, all the default settings. But now I can say import. I don't have a memory card this time. This time I'm going to go grab the photos where they exist out in my user folder, out in my pictures folder. There it is, the Australia folder. I want all five photos to come in and notice it automatically defaults to add because it says, hey, you already got these on your drive. No sense in me copying them or moving them. I'll just reference them where they are. You've already put them in your, um, in your pictures folder. No reason for me to do anything with them. And I can put in a keyword if I want or keywords. And now we'll just do the import. And it's quick. Because the images are already there. Didn't have to convert anything. They're already in whatever format they're in. It just added them to the library. And now I can go back and do all the same things we just did 
but now I'm working in my Australia catalog and I'm not having to mix the two images, two sets of images together. Anytime I want to get back to my toys, file, open recent or open catalog. Since it was recent, it will be in my toys catalog. It will prompt me that it's going to relaunch Lightroom to do this. No problem, because it closes Lightroom down, closes the catalog, relaunches it with the catalog you just told it. So I can switch back and forth between images, between catalogs, and yes, you can even import one catalog into another if you need to. But that's a quick look at how to get started with Lightroom. I know that was a lot, but I could spend the rest of the day telling you about Lightroom. So while that may seem like it was a lot, there's a lot more to go. Now that you've got the basis, it's really that much easier to figure out what's going on with the rest. Go watch my other videos. Go to Adobe TV, tv.adobe.com. Go to creativesweetpodcast.com. There's tons of Lightroom stuff for you out there for you to continue your education with Lightroom. And of course, I'll be doing more. Thanks for your time. My name's Terry White. Thanks for watching.